Whoa, who wants to swim in this? Sometimes things get out of control so quickly. Weeds and algae in a pond can start small, then suddenly, what seems like overnight, your water is a mess of green slime. You can't fish, irrigate, or swim in your pond. Here are five steps to take back control. The first step is to identify your problem plants. Algae growth is a common nuisance. Filamentous algae often starts growing on the bottom of the pond. Then it rises up to the surface to form mats. If it's slimy, green, and made up of tiny intertwined threads with no leaves or roots, it's probably filamentous algae. Planktonic algae, on the other hand, are microscopic cells suspended in the water column. Their overabundance reduces water clarity, giving it a green or brownish color. Surface scums, foul odors, low oxygen levels, and in some rare cases, even toxins can occur. Cara, or muskgrass, is a type of algae often mistaken as a weed because of its stem and leaf-like structures. Crush it and smell it. If it has a musky odor and feels bristly, it may very well be Cara. Aquatic weeds can also create a nuisance. Floating weeds can be free-floating on the water surface or rooted with just floating leaves. Even pretty flowering plants like these water lilies can spread and cover your entire pond. Salvinia, or water fern, which floats freely on the water surface. Water shield and water pittywort, both rooted with floating leaves. And duckweed, often found alongside water meal, an extremely difficult plant to control. Emergent weeds, like cattails, have leaves and stems extending above the water surface. While some shoreline vegetation is desirable, cattails spread quickly through seeds or rhizomes. Some other common emergent plants are creeping water primrose, whose long stems look like they're reaching across the water, purple loosestrife, an extremely aggressive, invasive weed, and phragmites, or common reed, which forms tall, dense stands. Submerged weeds are rooted to the bottom of the pond, and the leaves remain mostly underwater. Common examples are the large group of plants classified as pond weeds. Also, the aggressive invasive weed, water milfoil, which has whorled feathery leaves around the stem. Naiads, whose brushy leaves form clumps underwater. Coontail, which is bushy at the top to resemble a raccoon's tail and may float freely on the surface. Hydrilla, an invasive plant that outcompetes native plants, branching out and forming thick mats at the surface and Elodea, which looks a lot like Hydrilla but has only three leaves in a whorl compared to Hydrilla's five. Step two, measure the treatment area and oftentimes depth in order to calculate the amount of product you need. There's a couple of ways to measure a pond. You can walk along the shoreline and estimate distance based upon length of your stride. Use a measuring wheel to determine lineal distance. To measure the average depth of the water, use a pole or a simple weighted line marked off in feet. For more information on measurements and formulas, check out the measuring section on our mobile site. Step three, you're now ready to select the product or products you need. You've identified your plants. Now, look at the label. If you have algae, choose an algicide, like Qtrine Plus algicide. If weeds are your problem, an aquatic herbicide label will often list target plants. Once you know what product to use, the measurements you took will help you determine how much product to purchase. Read the entire label and check for any water use restrictions. Before you're done shopping, make sure you have the proper application and personal protective equipment. While small spot treatments may only require a backpack sprayer, larger treatments might call for power sprayers or even a boat to access offshore areas. Now that you have the products and supplies needed, secure them for safe transport to your lake or pond. Step 4. Read and follow product label instructions completely before starting your application. Put on the necessary personal protective equipment as specified on the label. This may include rubber gloves, eyewear, chemical resistant footwear, and long pants and sleeves. You're now ready for Step 5. Apply the product. Most liquid products that target algae and weeds need to be diluted and sprayed onto the vegetation. 
Check the directions, add the specified amount of water, and make sure it's mixed thoroughly. Dilution rates may vary depending on the output of the equipment, but make sure the product is evenly distributed. And sometimes the label provides additional guidance on how to achieve best results. If your pond is heavily infested with vegetation, you should treat only small sections at a time. Wait up to two weeks between treatments to avoid oxygen depletion from decaying plant matter. If you're treating growth beneath the water surface, submerge the spray nozzle to get chemical in close contact with the weeds. However, avoid stirring up sediment during application. Most algae will turn yellow, brown, or even white within a few days. Full results, like breakdown and decay, may take up to 10 days, so be patient. Rooted and floating aquatic plants take longer to show results, but you should be able to see some wilting and browning of vegetation within two weeks, depending on the product used. Still, retreatment may be necessary. Again, it's best to treat vegetation before it gets out of control or take some preventative measures. AquaShade Aquatic Plant Growth Control, an EPA-registered specially formulated dye, absorbs specific wavelengths of light critical to plant photosynthesis. Pour into the water before the growing season to prevent growth of underwater weeds. Other unregistered pond colorants are available in varying concentrations and colors. These are used primarily for aesthetic purposes and do not specify they are for plant control. Usually colorants will disperse throughout the pond within hours of application. If your aquatic vegetation problem calls for a granular product, a granular spreader may be useful to help with even product distribution. After treatment, clean the application equipment to avoid cross-contamination. Check the labeled storage and disposal section for more information. The final step is enjoying a beautiful, usable pond. Ha <laughs> ha